We're at the INSEAD Leadership Summit Europe, celebrating the school's 50th anniversary. I'm joined by Michael Ostrom, the founder of Procuritas in Sweden. Thank Welcome. you, Celia. How did the economic in crisis affect you? Well, so far it hasn't affected us that, that bad because we felt uh, back in 2006, in 2007, we felt that uh, either the world was crazy or we were crazy. And having analyzed the U.S mortgage market, the U.S. financial markets, um, seeing the behavior of some banks in Europe, primarily located in an island up close to, to Greenland, we decided that probably the world was crazy and we were fairly sane. So we started selling. So we sold out 90% of our assets from a value perspective. And we were also able to start raising a fund before the, the market closed completely. So we, uh, the, we have not been so affected by the, the, the present uh, or the turmoil two, three years ago. That was a very brave position to take. Nobody else was taking it. Well, I think uh, other people may have taken it, uh, but uh, we, we felt strongly, and I think it may have to do with that we had seen a similar development, but more locally, uh, oriented in, in Sweden and Finland in the early 90s when uh, the real estate, uh, there was a real estate bubble which burst and the financial system it didn't collapse but was extremely uh, heavily affected and the government had to come in and support uh, a lot of the local banks in the Nordic region. So we saw it was a similar theme but on, on a much grander scale. So not only were you in a position because of the history that you'd lived through yeah. to weather this, e to, to foresee the economic crisis, but how did you benefit from it? The benefit, of course, was, was that we sold because we were able to sell at very good prices. One of the reasons we started selling was that we could see when we were trying to buy companies, some of the banks were willing to lend more than we were willing to pay for the company. And then that was also another factor which influenced our thinking. Uh, of course, I should add, as always, it's, it's luck. The timing of the portfolio was, was good also to sell. Did you have to readjust your strategy? I know that you target mid-level mid companies. Yes. One nice thing is that we have not used excessive, or I should maybe say excessive leverage, but we have not used an enormous amount of leverage in our deals. If you look uh, historically, we have probably used 50, 60 percent of the total enterprise value has been debt, and the rest has been equity. So when now when, when, when the, the crisis uh, uh, hit upon us and the bank started uh, lending less, we were relatively to some others that maybe used 70-80% debt, le we were less affected. And therefore we, are co we have been able to continue to buy and, and, and grow companies in a, in a fairly good manner. How important do you think it is for a government to step in at this time, to have government flexibility? And who takes the lead in rebounding from an economic crisis, the business or government? In a situation like this, when there is such an immediate uh, crisis, it's hard for business to suddenly stand up and say, we're going to take the lead. Politicians have to, to help out uh, with that. Um, and I think uh, what, has, uh, what politicians have done has, uh, in the U.S. and now in Europe with the present crisis that we have here, I think so far has been, uh, been uh, uh, very worthwhile. Uh, but then, again, we have a much more deeper structural problem that we need to deal with. Can the consumption that we see today, can it continue? the same way it's been doing for the last 20, 30 years. And, and unfortunately, a big part of the consumption has been debt financed. If you look at the, at the GDP, uh, the debt, the to for example, in the US, the total uh, debt in the US from an individual level up to the federal level, I think the US today has $56 trillion. Had it followed a trend line, which it did for many, many years, it would have been $16 trillion. I think this is a trend line going back 100, 100 years. And this uh, enormous um, uh, deviation of $40 trillion has taken place the last 20, 30 years. And I would, ask, I, I would assume that a big portion of that $40 trillion difference, that's debt which has been used for consumption. A lot is financial, of course. But in this dismantling of this huge debt mountain, uh, trying to keep up consumption at the same time. It's a very tricky equation. 
but that's more in the U.S. market, which is quite different from the Scandinavian market. If we look at, uh, uh, for example, Sweden, we have, six years ago we had uh, 1,500 billion uh, SEK uh, in household debt. Today we have 2,400. So in just six years' time, we have racked up our debt levels, household debt levels, with 900 billion crowns, which is a big amount. And the banks are still financing uh, homeowners, uh, you know, with 85, 90 percent uh, leverage. I think it's it's too high. I, I don't think it's healthy. I've, I've been thinking uh, for a while about the crisis, and of course, deregulation and uh, human greed has been uh, too extremely important part uh, of building up this debt mountain. But also many of the people in the US who were part of the uh, depression, who saw people starve to death, this was still a society with uh, airplanes and telephones and cars and so on, and still they couldn't take care of, of their own uh, citizens. Um, many of those people, they died or they were not in power in, in the late 80s or mid 80s. They had started kind of being phased out of society one way or another. And therefore, a lot of people who never ever experienced hardship were in charge and could then take decisions when it came to leverage and, and incurring debt, which was, I think, quite different compared to their fathers or mothers and, and, and their grandfathers. What about INSEAD? What role has that played in your career? Well, it's played a, a, a very defining role. Um, uh, I'd spent a couple of years in the U.S. I, I saw a small firm. There were three guys, one called Kohlberg, one was Kravis, and the other one was Roberts. They had, star small one. They had started <laughs> something. This was 1982, and they had just a couple of years before started something called KKR. And I thought that was extremely interesting, uh, the way they were, were, were doing things. But I realized being a Swede in, in New York would be like, uh, I, I was then working uh, for an American uh, Swedish family in New York. But I, I realized getting involved in private equity or at that time leveraged buyouts in the U.S. would be like uh, a Swedish herring in an ocean filled with big white American sharks. <laughs> so I decided to, to, to leave, uh, leave um, the U.S. And, 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 and take an MBA. And, and for me, it was perfect as it was a one year, very focused. It was Europe. I wanted to get back to Europe. I married a Swedish girl and she also wanted to, to go back to Europe. And, and the INSEAD and the contacts and, uh, and the sheer uh, intellectual challenges and stim stim stimulus that you get here is, is fantastic, I think. What advice would you have for today's student? Follow your, your heart. Uh, I mean, here we, we are trained uh, to become extremely rational uh, uh, decision machines. But I think you have to have your heart uh, with you as well and not maybe do what everyone else is doing, not just go for investment banking or consulting, uh, maybe look at uh, other challenges in life. Thank you very much. Well, thank for you, Cindy. Joining us on INSEAD Knowledge. Oh, it was fun.